Hey everybody, I'm back. We'll do a late-ish April TBR. Um, yeah, got a few books pulled that I want to read this month. I've got more that I could possibly read this month as well. But this is quite a big pile, so we're going to go through it. So for my classic of the month, as you know, I'm trying to read one classic and one Stephen King every month. So my classic this month is George Orwell's 1984. Made a start on it. Not much because Jennifer was interrupting me. So George Orwell, it's the original dystopia isn't it? Hidden away in the, in the record department of the sprawling Ministry of Truth, Winston Smith skillfully rewrites the past to suit the needs of the party, yet he inwardly rebels against the totalitarian world he lives in, which demands absolute obedience and controls him through the all-seeing telescreens and the watchful eye of Big Brother. Symbolic head of the party. In his longing for truth and liberty, Smith begins a secret love affair with a fellow worker, Julia, but soon discovers the tr true price of freedom is betrayal. Well, there we go, thought I'd read that. Of course we've got Carrie, as you know about this, you saw this in my um, book haul. I'm going to be reading Carrie this month. And I've got book three of the Dynasty series by Cynthia Harrod Eagles. This is called The Princeling, you can see this is falling apart, so I could give this to my mum and then we can just get rid of it. So um, what happens now? So in this one, Elizabeth I is now Queen of England and the Catholic Morelands are threatened by the upsurge in Protestantism. They must seek new spheres of influence if they are to restore the family fortunes. John, heir to Moreland Place, rides north to wed the daughter of Black Will Percy, a Borderland cattle lord. He learns through blood and battle how to win proud Mary's heart. Latisse, his gentle sister, is married to the ruthless, ambitious Scottish Baron, Lord Robert Hamilton, who teaches her the bitter lesson of survival in the bleak and treacherous court of Mary, Queen of Scots. Continuing the powerful story begun in The Founding and the Dark Rose, sees the, this, the princeling sees the Morelands fighting for their religion, their inheritance and their love. So yeah, it's a, it is a very... Sounds very soppy, but it, the, the first one, the first one I read, which was the second book, is so good that I'm, I'm going to read the next one. So I want to try and get through that one this month. Then, obviously, I've got Extraordinary People by Peter May. You would have seen this in my book haul. So this is Enzo McLeod, the first one of the Enzo McLeod series, Cold Cases. Love stuff like that. Uh, what else we've got? We've got The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. This looks quite thick, but uh, I'm sure I'll get rid of it quite quickly. 28 years ago Charlotte and Samantha Quinn's childhoods were destroyed by a terrifying attack on their family home. It left their mother dead, it left their father a notorious defence attorney devastated and it left the family consumed by secrets from that shocking night. 28 years later Charlie has followed in her father's footsteps become a lawyer but when violence comes to their hometown again the case triggers memories she's desperately tried to suppress because the shocking truth about the crime which destroyed her family won't stay buried forever. I love Karen Slaughter, she's a fantastic author. Then we've got Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Picked this up from a charity shop. I need you to call me back, it's important. Just days before her sister plunged to her death, Jules ignored her call. Now Nell is dead. They say she jumped and Jules must return to her sister's house to care for her daughter and to face the mystery of Nell's death. But Jules is afraid of her own long buried memories of the old mill house of this small town that is drowning in secrecy and of knowing that Nell would never have jumped. So, yeah, I love this stuff. This stuff is brilliant. Um, one I picked up recently from, as you see, The Works, Murder at the Gorge by Francis Eversham. It's got my bridge on the France. It's Clifton Suspension Bridge. When the XO1C residents are targeted by anonymous emails containing apparently harmless nursery rhymes, no one knows whether to laugh or cry, or shudder rather, until an unexplained death touches the town. Libby Forrest, Baker, Chocolatier and Exum's very own residential private investigator, along her side her partner Max Ramshaw set out to solve the puzzle before more people die. But when Max's ex-wife arrives on the scene ahead of Max and Libby's long-awaited nuptials, thing goes from bad to worse. With the town and the relationship under threat, Max and Libby need the help of the Exum History Society if they're going to find the nursery rhyme killer in time. So yeah, so it looks, look at that, the bridge is beautiful. You can walk across the bridge and look down on the gorge. I've done it, it's absolutely fantastic. One book I've had on my TBR for a, such a long time was recommended by my friend and I've just never got round to reading it. I think I started it and then I stopped for whatever reason and that is The Lightning Struck Heart by T.J. Clune. Now I know everybody loves T.J. Clune because of the House on the Cerulean Sea etc etc but this one has been around for ages so 
Basically, it says, once upon a time in an alleyway in the slums of the city of Locks, a young and somewhat lonely boy named Sam Haversford turns a group of teenage douchebags into stone completely by accident. Of course, this catches the attention of a higher power and Sam's pulled from the only world he knows to become an apprentice to the King's wizard, Morgan of Shadows. When Sam's 14, he enters the dark woods and returns with Gary, the hornless gay unicorn and a half giant named Tiggy, earning the moniker Sam of Wilds. At 15, Sam learns what love truly is when a new knight arrives at the castle. So, Knight Ryan Foxheart, the dreamiest dream to have ever been dreamed. Naturally, it all goes to hell when Ryan dates the reprehensible Prince Justin. Sam can't control his magic. A sexually aggressive dragon kidnaps the prince, and the king sends them all on an epic quest to save Ryan's boyfriend. All while Sam falls more in love with someone he can never have, or so he thinks. So, obviously, this is a gay book. I love it. Um, my friend Julie told me about this years ago and I bought it and I just haven't got around to reading it. It was the gay unicorn thing that grabbed me. I had to have it because of the gay unicorn. <laughs> you know, who doesn't need a gay unicorn in their life? I, I certainly do. So I am definitely going to be hitting that one this month. Some of these are the newer books I bought. The next two are. And then there's only one more after that, which I might try and read this month. And then there's a pile of uh, extras just in case. So the next one is um, the, he the X Hex, which obviously is one that's done the rounds on TikTok by Erin Sterling. I've read this out before. Uh, basically, she hexes her ex, he comes back, all hell breaks loose, so, and she tries to break the curse with him. That's basically the story. So, yeah. And People of Abandoned Character by Claire Whitfield, which is about uh, Jack the Ripper, basically. Is her husband, our protagonist's husband, is he Jack the Ripper? Now, some people in the Ripper community have read this and they don't like it. But it's fiction and I like reading Jack the Ripper fiction and I'm going to give it a go. So why not? The last one I've got is huge, but it's been sitting there and I'm dying to get to it because I love anything to do with ancient Egypt, as you can see. And it's The Memoirs of Cleopatra by Margaret George. And I love the cover. Um, it doesn't say on the back. If we're going, uh, what does it say? It's a tale of passion that begins when the 21-year-old Cleopatra, desperate to return from exile, seeks out the one man who can help her, Roman general Julius Caesar, and it does not end until having survived the assassination of Caesar and the defeat of the second man she loves, Mark Antony, she plots her own death rather than allow herself to be paraded in triumph through the streets of Rome. Yeah. So, yeah. Why not? So those are the ones that are my priority for the month that I want to read. Like I said, you have a few other Harlan Coburn, Play Dead, The Silent Patient, Before I Find You, and so on. There's loads more, but these are the ones I'm definitely going to be prioritising this month. Anything interesting there? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below, and I will talk to you again very, very soon.